<gasps> what? We forgot the steering column. The steering oh. column. We had this put back on. Christian, we talked about this last yeah. week. Why yeah. didn't you put a big fat stop sign? You know, you're not. What? Christian. What was that? <gasps> what? Oh, Today is the first day of working on our new to us Land Rover Discovery 4 with a major engine failure. Which has a major engine obstruction as we just found out. <laughs> yeah, the professional term in the gap tool is called engine obstructed. Yeah. It's a 2016 SDV6 with an engine failure at 64,000 kilometers. It was purchased new by the current owner and after the engine failure he was told by Land Rover it's 30,000 euros to fix which I think is a pretty bad statement by Land Rover. We bought the vehicle from him and our goal is it to get it back on the road and make a video series about the entire repair. We got two degrees and overcast sky with a good chance of rain so nothing better to take the body off for the first time in our life on our new two post lift we installed last summer and see how this is gonna go. You think we take the body off today? Or? That's my goal. <laughs> we don't want to rush it, um, but I think at nine o'clock tonight we will be done. What? Okay. <laughs> He's gonna have to position a dead discovery onto our two post lift. Oh my god, oh my god, no! Ah! Oh no! Yeah, not rim damage, but I hope there's no lift damage. Oh my god. So just pull me back a couple of feet so I can reposition it. Bump it one more time up. So now we got the lift engaged. The first step for a body off is disconnect the battery and stuff. Or should we open the parking brake? It's probably a good idea. I would open it. You hear that? Now we're gonna disconnect the battery. That's the first step. It's a symphony of technology. Good, now you can disconnect the battery. <laughs> After we got the battery out, we're gonna go to the doctor. <laughs> I prepped a room just for this rebuild. We're gonna take out all the junk, right? Yes. Draining the coolant, removing the auxiliary battery. Cleaned out my outdoor equipment room. That's where I keep all my camping gear and fishing gear. So we have room for all the parts. I put the battery in the first place because it's the first thing to take out and the last thing to put back in. So everything is nice and organized, not like when we did Fabian's engine. It was a catastrophe and was really bad. That was fast. Yes, I clean it a little bit and put it into storage. So I'm going to clean them up and put them in my permanent storage. <laughs> you are such a nice girl. <laughs> the air filter housing. We have a look. The air filter should be brand new because this car had a service yeah. just 3,000 kilometers ago. Air box. Yep. Moved all current used bikes out. So I have an organized room. More battery crap for you. That's it? Oh, I found a bolt. Maybe I should lift the car before removing the wheel. Oh. I don't like time lapses because I'm not allowed to talk. Temporary removal of the brand new tires. Don't forget the screw in behind the headlight. Putting all the bolts back. How did you get the hatch open? Uh, oh, yeah, took out the battery system completely. And it didn't say in the manual when you do the body off job, open your rear hatch. Cable actuator is now broken. So that actually cost us money now. That sucks. Okay, I gotta take the lights out. Oh, really? Because the plan is to take the body off. 
Oh my god. Okay, if you want to keep your Land Rover Discovery 3 cool, never upgrade it to a Discovery 4 mall crawler. Please don't. You got to get stuff out of the way now. There's also a lot of stuff over there. Yeah, I got to get my shit organized. Yeah. Are you cleaning my parts nicely? Yes. So you have like little bags? Yes. I learned my lesson. We had only one bolt left over. I'm gonna take the rear bumper off. Yeah. Pound of dirt. Now there's a cable. Remember, oh. you oh, know? Yeah. This is the tire pressure monitor sensor. Good catch. Oh my god. You really have to take everything apart. There we go. And snow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Out. Okay, and there I got now access to the fuel filler neck and to the brake lines. That's the first discovery I ever seen where this is not rusty. That's how good in a shape it is. Very well. I'm gonna continue with the brake lines. We're done with everything around. Now we gotta get underneath the car. Okay, it's not really much down here. There's no rust on that car. <laughs> Christian says there's nothing else to do except remove the body screws. Yeah. So the transmission, everything is operated by wire only, so there are <laughs> no hardware to remove. No. I'm completely stressed. So body screw number one. Number two. Where is it? Oh, it's all the way up there. Three. Four. Okay, now, now we gotta put the road wheels back on. That's number seven. So now two more, and then just body. Three more, please. No, I have already one out while you were not oh. paying attention. So because our driver is in an incline, we had to, to raise him up a little bit because the body needs to be somewhat level. Now we can see if we can get the lift under the body. Yeah. Maybe a good idea to disconnect these cables here. I think they are kind of obvious causing problems when yeah. we don't disconnect them, right? <laughs> Number 10. So the body is loose from the chassis. <laughs> oh my God. So this needs to pass by here. I'm sure we're gonna rip something, but we just have to accept yeah. that fact. Okay, bump it up one more time. One more. Yeah, it's lifting here in the front. Oh my god. I can see that there's already a gap on the body mount here. Okay, then check for cables. It's hung up here. Oh my god. Okay, bump it one more time. It's Ooh, that's not gonna here. work yet. <gasps> what? We forgot the steering column. The steering oh. column. We had this put back on, so that was close. Christian, we talked about this last yeah. week. We Why had, didn't you put a big fat stop sign? <laughs> we had the steering column off before, but then we need to move the car again. Yeah, because our lift broke. It's good enough. It's, it's good off. enough. Oh, it is? Yeah. Yeah, you put the screw somewhere here. Oh, that's a dangerous one. Okay, bump it one more time up. Holy cow, this is gonna get really tight here. Bump it one more time. Bump it one more time. Okay, that was the first one that broke. What was that? I don't know, it fell down on the ground. Here, you forgot the clip. Where? I wonder where that one came from. We found a lot more cables. And see, we are already like 10 centimeters off. Yeah. <laughs> one bump. Look for the noise. Yeah, there's no noise, but I think the noise always happens when it's too late. One more, one more, one more. Oh. What? I don't know. 
Watch it. Yeah. You know you're not. What was that? Did we rip off an airline? Yeah, we ripped off an airline. Yeah, this is good. Okay, this is all gonna stay with the car. Oh. What? We got a major debacle here. I told you about those two black thingies that go into the body and you said, oh, it's all fine. <laughs> uh, that's really embarrassing that I didn't take those off. Yeah, because they are really obvious. And I don't know why I didn't take those off. Yes. Especially when your wife tells you. About yes. <laughs> Look at that, how far off we are now. At least 25 centimeters. That was almost <laughs> stupid what I did. Uh, just like those people in the Facebook group say, I'm all stupid. So bump it one more time. Sounding like nothing snapped. Yeah, want to make sure the filler is okay here. Okay. Yeah. That's all good here. It would be embarrassing if the if it's visible on the video and I don't see it. Yeah. That might. No, no, that yeah. goes all oh. together. Bump it one more time. Can't you put something underneath that wheel? It's all free here. It's all free here. It's free until I say snap. It's moving. Yeah. Nine. So we're completely free here in the engine compartment. I and Vera keeps nagging that there's something needs to be under this wheel. Just do it. There is. Oh, I found something what we forgot. Oh, look at that. How pretty. It's a line here. See? No, it's a dishwash line. Can you be less exciting? Huh? That's the Ed Blue Tank. Okay, all I have to do is say yes, because she <laughs> answers the questions herself. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Yeah, until the chassis drops down. And he left that tool. Oh, shit. Yeah. You know, the snipping wrench. This one, the snipping. <laughs> yeah. That's accurate enough, it's a snipping wrench. <laughs> yeah. What was that? <gasps> what? Oh, fuck. You forgot something. Your intuition. I told you. That emergency release came. So stop the camera. So what's the transmission for the ground cable? It's free now. Yeah. That was a little bit more. Good. What if it's storming like Move yesterday? It. Okay, that's good enough. It's up now. Vera is slowly calming down now. She was all excited. It doesn't look like we snapped anything, but it was close in a couple of areas. That was so, a surprise. But yeah, it's that was a surprise. Trip. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Stop being excited. We're gonna take the engine out. That's the next step. And yes, the transmission will stay in the vehicle. So, okay, it's this. this clunk of stuff is going to come out next and that will be today. The is going to stay inside <sighs> the to come out. Why don't you let me surprise you like in so many other life cycles? Okay? It's not in neutral. Shit, man! <laughs> what are we going to do now? It's because we stretched this That's line okay. here. Because it was in neutral. Yeah, and it popped back in. I need to make something to pull on this piece. See, this needs to be pulled. Yeah. And then it goes into neutral. neutral. And we'll move it in. Our new operating room. <laughs> I think that's enough. I think that engine is out in one hour. <laughs> I say four hours okay. or five hours so, the intake hose first the intake. air intake it was leaking see i think there's no discovery for around where this is not leaking watch this bolt i'll watch that bolt oh <gasps> whoa good that he told me oh that was easy on this one yeah so remember you need a 36 spanner there we go oh what am i gonna do with that um don't yeah you are back to the car care nut modus. So easy. <laughs> Everything is so accessible and easy now. <laughs> okay, 
It's so easy. So easy. So easy. <laughs> Goes to the air hose. Still here in my first box. Taking the cooler chunk out is a lot faster body off than body on. Ah, oh, good job. Perfect. Okay, down. So that only took like 45 minutes. That's not bad. Plan is to put as many screws yeah, back as possible down. because oh. that was a major time factor on mm -hmm. Fabian's engine. The engine we built room is filling up. Here's a coolant. And that is everything before body off. You see? We are using our freshly renovated pit. You know, we got the lift outside and we got the pit in the garage. Yeah. I can get into my pit and get coolant all over my place, <laughs> uh, over my head. So getting the crossover pipe out is a lot easier with body off. This is so easy. <laughs> oh, this is so easy. Oh, that's so easy. Look. Yep. And one more heat shield. Crossover pipe stuff. The bolts are basically new on this car. There's the stud also with it and the gasket. Yep. Come here. Oh, cool. One crossover pipe out in less than 15 minutes. So, got this all covered up. Very now. Fuel lines are clean here. You get those plugs when you change your fuel filter. Yeah. This step done here, taking the two fuel lines off. And the next step is to take off on the left hand side with three bolts. Yep. We'll do that. Oh, they might <laughs> crack. Oh, please don't. I you can I, use some heat. We use some heat. Ah. 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 That was good. What should they hot now? Mm, yeah, I'm not gonna touch them. Yeah, the other side goes, no yeah. problem. Apparently, we have a... We have a little bit of a problem. Yeah. Once the crankshaft is seized, what it is here on this engine, you can't get to the mounting bolts from the torque converter. So we can't separate the torque converter from the flywheel. No chance. I have to pull the torque converter out of the transmission, which means I have to take this entire transmission out and tilt this up and bring it back. And then hopefully I can pull the torque converter out of the transmission. At six o'clock Saturday evening, we are kind of done and it's freaking cold. So we didn't expect that problem. Another day on our engine, rebuild. Christian is underneath in our pit, taking out the transmission fluid of the HP8. <gasps> Brand new lifeguard. Break the transmission loose. We did that all on Fabian's engine with the body on. <laughs> so Christian, start your... <laughs> That's so easy. <laughs> so what is that now? Engine mount. So there's the steering car. <laughs> Do you think I need to explain to the Toyota people what this device is called here? No, because they have a different one. The car cannot explain that already. Oh, okay. It's a pivotal socket, so, which I want to buy. So let me show you guys my absolutely safe setup so I can have your comments here. I got pretty good size oak boards over my pit. And I got a hydraulic lift point here below and I got here something for the transmission to raise it up and I bolted down guide rails here on the side so the hoist doesn't slip over onto the boards of the pit. I got them also fastened here in the back so it doesn't slip together. I got the bumper removed so I can get really close to the car. 
And I got this thing in the center of gravity with that setup we made last time to lift out Fabian's engine. And Vera isn't around, otherwise you would have heard about five oh my gods now. It's not, it hasn't lifted. It had just moved, you know, because it's loose. I just want to make a push and... <laughs> no, it doesn't work because it's hung up on oil pan. We should have taken the oil pan out, then it would be no problem. I know things changed a little bit and I screwed up. But as a YouTuber, you know, I can hide all this in the video and just continue a few hours later. I should have taken the oil pan off in order to get that engine out with the torque converter on. So I had to disconnect the transmission now and build me a little tiny support for it so that I can balance that transmission in the same height up as the engine while I lift it. So what I'm gonna have to do first is get that transmission back in place so that I don't lose track of what I'm doing. Now I wonder how I'm gonna get this baby off because I can't get to these bolts. I got the engine out job completed. I got the transmission back in place and everything wired up. Front prop shaft installed, rear prop shafts are gonna leave out, do it from underneath. Next video will be taking the engine apart. And this baby here gotta roll out and wait underneath the chassis there. Oh, this could be hail damage. We got four cars in the driveway and we got this kind of hail. This is just not fair. At this point we want to thank our Patreons a lot for their support and... We'll see you next Sunday.